back. Welcome back to the teachings of the way. Um, we're going to begin to uh, to start in chapter five, and um, in the previous chapters, we introduced the Father's original language, <clears throat> or at least I began to began to introduce to you the Father's original language um, through different verses, and begin to um, truly expose you to the Father's way in terms of uh, the letter forms, the pictures, the symbols. In this chapter, we want to start to put everything together. Because the last thing I want to do is, you know, go through all these uh, teachings, and then you're just as confused and lost as before about a new teaching called the way. There's nothing new about it. It's, 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 it is the way uh, for your belief system. And then you don't know how to do, you don't know what to do. Um, and you probably have a ton of questions, especially after me talking about Shabbat and then me talking about Christ and what Christ meant. So we're going to start to put all these uh, ideas together um, and build upon them. But I do want to pause for a minute because I think some of you are probably embracing, I pray, embracing the Father's word, truly his original way. And you want to share it with some of your family members, your brothers, your sisters. I will share with you um, that this could be a challenge. Uh, you may not be ready for their reaction. And what I mean by this is, I was trying to think of how to talk about this. And, and I think what the father sh was saying to me was before you do that, consider maybe the next conversation that you have with them, that you start to introduce Hebrew words into the conversation, not, you know, not the, the Hebrew symbols or their meaning, but actual Hebrew words, see what their reaction is. You know, if if you if you say Yahweh, they're gonna be lost. They're they're gonna be like, who's Yahweh? They've always heard it as Yahweh or some other form, Yahuwah, which means a cursed one. But you need to understand they their eyes for the lack of a better term are blinded to these truths. All of our eyes are blinded to these truths. Only the Father can reveal the truth of what we're sharing to you. Not me, not anyone. Only the Ruach, through His Spirit, can it be revealed. So they may not receive the message, is what I'm trying to say. In fact, some may alienate themselves from you because now you've begun to believe in a different way. They don't do it on purpose. They do it out of ignorance. The thing is, you're going to get discouraged and frustrated. So what I would ask is stick with me through the end of this, uh, this book that, that we're sharing, chapter 10. And then afterwards, I do plan on sharing videos on how to talk to other believers about the belief uh, of the way. I do plan to teach other things. Um, I'm really excited to start teaching. I uh, have uh, a teaching on tithing uh, that I think every believer should understand. Just little things that I'm going to begin to start to, to teach that um, you know are in the Father's Word. So please keep that in mind. You know, I don't want you to get dis discouraged or frustrated. Um, they're not going to receive the message unless the Father is revealing it to them. And you'll know that the Father is revealing it to them because they will begin to ask questions. Okay? Now, not questions like, you know, why are you doing this or why you believe this way, but they will genuinely, you will, you will sense, you will be able to determine, you'll discern the Spirit whether 
that Ruach is 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 ants is um is leading them to want to know more. Now here's the thing that I have to share with you. Some of you are gonna share this with your spouse, with your kids. They're gonna think you've lost your mind. Um just from my personal experience, uh, I, I uh, embraced this 110%. I went all in. Uh, I lost a pastor. I lost a relationship with my mom. And they all love the father. They all love the father, okay? Um, but they don't understand or they haven't yet, their eyes haven't yet been opened. And that's not all that I've lost. We'll talk about more of that. But just understand. Stay with me through the book. After each chapter video, pray before and pray afterwards that the Father reveal to you how to apply this in your own life, your family's life. You know, we haven't got into it yet, but when we talk about Shabbat, I'm speaking to men now. Uh, you have taken your responsibility of teaching your family and giving it to a pastor. And I'm not saying there's not a need for a pastor. But your responsibility is to raise up your family. Your first ministry, if you will, is to your spouse, your wife, your husband, then your kids. But that ministry is to teach them the word, the truth of the way. And not let, not not shoulder that responsibility onto someone else. That's why Shabbat was so important. Because Shabbat, the father, was supposed to sit down with the family, and teach them the Father's way, through His Word, and to teach His family how to worship the Father on His dedicated and Kodesh day. We're going to talk more about this. It's not to make you feel condemned, is to start to teach you the proper way. So let's look at this. Chapter 5, let's put it all together. Let's, let's really put it all together. The language of dedication, the 22 letter forms, Safa, Ha, Kodesh, Kadam. The language, the language, Safa, Ha, Kodesh, of dedication, Kadam, from the beginning. Basically, to you, uh, we've shared it as pictures, okay? We share with you, it's about family and pure language. And we share with you that the Father wants to return a pure language to his flock, his believers, one flock. And as we said before, to have the mind of Mashiach, means to think as Yeshua thought. And to think as he thought, we must understand the Eastern mindset that he had. And this requires an adjustment to our Western way of thinking. I share with you that East means Yad versus West, Kadam. So let's look at this a little closer. West, Kadam. I said Greek was based on abstract ideas. What I mean by this is attention is given to form, not function. So if you asked a Westerner what a pencil is, they would probably describe for you, describe for you and say, hey, a pencil is a number two yellow stick with a pink rubber eraser and lead point. Form. How does it look? In abstract idea or the way of thinking, it's, just, it's, a, it's a way of thinking where you must understand in order to do. Okay, you don't set out to do first, you set, you set out to understand before you do and put action to it. In abstract ideas, in the Western way of thinking, it's either or it's or. 
So either or, meaning that there's only one way of seeing things. An example of this is the word grace. Aside from the word being pagan in origin, charis is the actual Greek word. A Greek deity was the wife of Vulcan, the son of Zeus. That was charis. The word means favor or kindness. Both are abstract terms which dis display no object of any kind. And they take you right back to where you started, nowhere. And I know, I know, you're like, what are you talking about, Robert? Here's Wikipedia. And if you don't know about Wikipedia, it's about the most satanic version of an encyclopedia that's out there. The encyclopedia was based on the scripture, and Wikipedia seeks to change that. But I guarantee you, they're going to get the Greek mythology correct. Charis in mythology. In Greek mythology, Charis, I can't even show some of these pictures because they're pretty, they're basically pornography. Charis, grace, beauty, and life, is one of Charites, one of the Charites, ancient Greek graces, goddesses of charm, beauty, nature, human creativity, and fertility, in Homer's Iliad. Charis was also known as Kel, beauty, or Aglia, splendor. The problem we find ourselves in is the Father didn't want us to learn all this. And he told us not to do that. And there's no way for me to explain this without referencing back to the original Greek, why we use certain words. I'm going to talk more about grace, faith, later. And I'll show you in the Greek that it's charis. Just if you'll, if you'll just give me a, a little bit of time, I'll show you. But what I'm trying to show you is, is when we say we're saved by grace, okay? It's an, it's an abstract idea. All right? When we say we're saved by grace, what does it mean? Well, something that's abstract can mean something that different to anyone. And, and that's the problem. It's, it's, it, 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 there is only one way of seeing things. And you would say, hey, uh, grace means that I'm um, saved. Or grace means that I'm, I was looked upon to have salvation. Fill in the blank, right? Grace means something different to everyone. Yod, for example, though, in contrast, East, Yod, it's based on concrete ideas. Concrete ideas. Attention is given to function. Function. Okay? Not form, function. You would ask an East, if you asked an Eastern person what a pencil is they would say something i write with it has a function not it's a yellow number two piece of wood that has a rubber eraser with a lead point on it that there's no function in that that's form for the eastern mindset you must do in order to understand It's the exact opposite of the West, to understand in order to do. You must do in order to understand. You know, a, a really easy, simple example of this would be, you do something around the house, and I guarantee you, you know, eight times out of ten, <laughs> you're going to YouTube it to understand how to do it before you do it. You must understand in order to do. Whereas in the East, you just do it, and then you'll understand. This will make more sense as we go through this. There's multiple ways, multiple ways of seeing things in the East. Multiple ways. So, example, grace was originally hana or chin. What are you saying, Robert? 
So think of the name Hannah in English. Hannah is from the word Hana. It's just a softer way of saying it in English. The father's pictographic letters for this word Hana, and there's gutturals in the Hebrew language. That's why we say ch, and it sounds, you know, that way. Okay, so Hana, paint a picture of pitching a tent with Elohim. This is something that is tangible and not abstract. So a simple 10 year old could understand. So let's look at these. Chet. Chet is a fence. Chet. Noon is a seed. Hey, worship, spirit. So instead of saying grace, what could we say? Or what is the understanding that we need to have for such words that were mistranslated into the Greek? So, a fence would be what? What would you use a fence for? The old saying goes, fences make for good neighbors. To protect your family. To protect. To surround. Het, a wall. Het, a wall. Children, to protect, surround, his children, noon, seed, noon, children, seed, teaching them through revelation, spirit, or revealing the truth, hey, spiritual man. We can literally say, I am saved, not by grace. But we can say, I am saved by pitching a tent with Yahweh daily. And as a result of his chana, his protection, as co-heirs, the seed, and fellowship, I will be washed by and grow in his word, which lay, lead to my obtaining salvation. Obtaining salvation. Not in the sense of work. But there is action that has to follow belief. It's exactly what Shaul taught. Shaul said, you show me your belief, I'll show you my belief with works. By learning to study key words in scripture using the Father's original pictograph alphabet, alphabet, alphabet we will begin to change our ways of thinking. We will start seeing the word and its message as, as it was intended to be seen. And eventually we will begin to see not only the whole word is a picture of Yeshua, but that the picture itself is built on the most basic elements. A house. A house. A family. And a garden. The Father's Word and His alphabet are comprised of the most basic and simple things for us to understand. So let's look at it. Remember I told you, the Father's Word consists of 22 original symbols or pictures. Now, before you go and do an internet search, okay, these symbols have been changed over the years to fit the modern Hebrew. So. When I give you these meanings, these are the original meanings. They're not the modern versions of those meanings. So when we look at this and we say, it's all about the sun, sun rising in the east, bursting light into the darkness or setting in the west and diminishing into darkness. Remember, two ways of looking at the Father's word. It's all about water or blood, Mem. Mem. Yeshua being washed by his word. Blood being purchased by the shedding of his blood. Seeds. Seeds, heirs, the good seed. Remember I talked about Noah's, the good seed? The good seed. But also 
Eastern mindset, the bad seed, the bad seed. It's all about thorns and roots and trees and vines, branches and shoots and fruit. It's all about eyes, eyes, what we see, ears, what we hear, hearts, what we understand, arms and hands, action, arm and a hand, action, what we do. Feet, our path, sod, sod. Our path, which we walk on. Heads, resh, what we think, and who is our headship. Resh. Mouths, what we say, and who we praise. It's all about the house of Elohim. House, seed. House seed, the family. It's all about the door, the door, Yeshua. That's why Yeshua said, I am the way. Your entrance to the Father is through what? Me. He's a door, the door. A tent peg, which secures our house our tent so we have the tent peg a plowing tool zayin used to dig into his word and to plant seeds <clears throat> a fence <clears throat> that surrounds and protects a basket a basket tet a basket that catches fish and stores bounty and a staff lamed Lamed, Lamed, Gimel. That steers and teaches the flock. Yod, Yod, Hey, Wall, Hey. The symbols of the Father's name. With that being understood, we do not need to learn the Hebrew language at all. Because the Father's anointed message is clearly preserved in each picture. He has painted through the letters of his Aleph Bayit. Consider Alexander the Great, who at the early age of 18 conquered the entire world. How did he do that? What made him so successful? He did not enslave his captors. He did not imprison them or starve them to death. He simply changed their language. He knew only too well, as does Hashatan, Satan, that if you change languages, you change mindsets and cultures as well. <clears throat> and this has been Satan's game. He has drawn people away from knowing the Father's original language, he has succeeded in causing everyone to forget the original language and to think and worship in ways that are contrary to the Father's original ways, contrary to the way of the Father from the beginning. These teachings, and this book is designed to help you follow along with the Father's Ruach HaKodesh, His Spirit or Presence, to deliver deeper and more accurate understandings about the Father's Word. It is also designed to get you started on your own journey to simplicity of the way. So why say and teach Kodesh or Kodesha and not holy? What's the big deal anyway? Let's go back to the source of the way and learn why the Father wanted it this way in the book of Deuteronomy. The Father taught us an especially important message in Deuteronomy about mixing his ways with others. Let's look at some of this loving instruction now in Deuteronomy chapter 22. You see, anything mixed in the Father's eyes is considered to turn his stomach, or is an abomination as we would say it in English. Remember, there are only two seeds in the earth. It's the seed of Yahweh and Yeshua, the heirs, B'nai Elohim, 
or the seat of Hashatan. To be Kodesh is to be sons and daughters of Elohim and dedicated to Yahweh and Yahweh alone in and through Yeshua and Yahweh's Ruach, his presence, spirit. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 9. You shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed, lest the whole fruit be, for, be forfeited, the seed which you have sown and the increase of the vineyard. Oh, Robert, what are you talking about? I said he doesn't like mixture. You should not plow with an ox and a donkey together. Don't mix. You should not wear a mixed stuff, wool, and linen together. Don't mix. Let's look at it in kind of more modern way of saying it. Uh, do not put on do not put on a garment of different mixed kinds of wool and linen together of different mixed kinds do not sow your vineyard with different mixed kinds of seed why Deuteronomy 23 verse 14 just go forward one down here to 14 for Yahweh, your Elohim, walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and to give up your enemies before you. Therefore, you shall, therefore, your camp, therefore, shall your camp be Kodesh, that he may not see an unclean thing in you and turn away from you. For Yahweh, your Elohim walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore, your camp shall be Kodesh. Why? So that he does not see unclean matter among you and, sure and shall turn away from you. Or my favorite for those that claim we have no works in salvation, Revelations chapter 3, verse 15. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. But because you are lukewarm, mixed, I am going to vomit you out. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. I'm going to vomit you out. So we all get the idea, right? We've all been in our homes or in uh, a rental place or an apartment where they have the shower uh, or the bathtub uh, knob and you have to turn it to get it mixed just right to find that lukewarm setting so you're not scolding yourself and you're not cold and freezing, right? So what the Father is saying, if we keeping keeping this scripture in mind, let's review the accuracy of the very popular statement. Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Oh, and I know I'm going to hit a nerve on this one. Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit in English and see how we may be mixing our worship, even our seed and belief with other Elohim. The Hebrew word Kodesh or dedicated was translated from the Father's scripture into the Greek word Hagios. And it means separate. In our older English, we derived several English words from hagios, including holy, hallowed, and sanctified, all very common terms used in Christianity today, and another popular word used, sacred. When these English words are used, they create the idea of piety, or being pious, 
or to be devout or devoted to something. Think of any religious ritual. Now, right away, you may be thinking, okay, here we go again. He is going to tear down my words. But listen, just for one minute, consider, consider that you may not have been taught the complete truth. And what I mean by this is that Kodesh, Hagios, essentially mean the same thing. Dedicated to something or someone. But what you should find interesting by studying to show yourself approved is the translators translators intended something very different in meaning. Let's look at it together in Isaiah 66, verse 15 through 17. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire, and his chariot shall be like the whirlwind, to render his anger with fierceness and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire will Yahweh execute judgment, by his sword and all, on all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens, behind one in the midst, eating pig's flesh, and the abomination, and the akbar. They shall come to an end together, says Yahweh. Hmm. Where have we heard this before? So let's look at this. In the original language, those who sanctify themselves. Let's read it in um, uh, the NIV real quick. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to go into the gardens, following one who is among those who eat the flesh of pigs, rats, mice, mouse, and other unclean things. Remember I talked about the unclean things, clean and unclean before the law? They will meet their end together with the one they follow, declares Yahweh. Looking at this in the uh, original language, we see those who sanctify is Kadosh. Okay. From the word Kodesh to, to dedicate. When we look at the, the Strongs here, we can see Sanctify, Hallow, Dedicate, Holy, Prepare, Consecrate, Appointed, Holy. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it dedicated. See how they interchanged? Kodesh for Holy. It shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aharon may bear the iniquity of the Kodesh things, the dedicated things which the children of Israel shall hallow. See, there's another distortion in all their holy gifts, and it shall be always upon his forehead that he may be accepted by Yahweh. So, What you need to understand is that in the Oxford English Dictionary, okay, the the and the Oxford English Dictionary is like the the premier uh, authoritative uh, uh, book or collection of of writings on the English language. It's it's words, it's phrases, etc. Okay, we can look up holy. In um, volume 5, page 345. And what it will say, and what we will read, is that the primitive, I'm sorry, what it will say, and what we will read as far as the definition of holy, it will say, quote, the primitive pre Christian meaning is uncertain. That's why I said, uh, uh, you know, going back to dictionaries that 
go off of scripture, not this uh, Wikipedia um, modernization of dic uh, dictionary, which seeks to distort uh, the Father's word and all the dictionaries that were based on the Father's word. While this should have been our first clue, its earlier application to heathen deities is found in own. Own, as in Old Norse. Digging deeper with this clue, we can reference the Netherlands warden book, Der Nenerlesh Tal, volume 6, page 455. In summary, it says, an explanation of the original meaning that makes it clear as to how this adjective has obtained the meaning of the Latin sanctus. So when you say sanctify, it's coming from the Latin sanctus. Sanctus. It has not yet been given. So what you need to understand is Old Norse or English is Germanic. English is Germanic. So when we say church and Old Norse or English, uh, Germanic English, it would be Kirk. As you can see, the enemy went to great depths to hide the truth from us. So in other words, we looked, we looked at two very premier versions of English that, that understand the, the English history of the of English words. And again, you can see that the word holy is hidden. It's, they don't explain it. And as you can see, they went, the enemy went to great depths to hide the truth from us. If we dig in deeper, we find a reference to the origin of the word holy in G. Job's Dictionary of Mythology, Folklore, and Symbols. <clears throat> Page 781. And we read, Holy, and particularly all languages, the word for holy is, has been derived from the divinely honored Son. In Furlong's Encyclopedia of Religions, we read holy, H-L-O-L-I. Now we get to the truth. Holy. Holy is the great Hindu spring festival held in honor of Krishna as the spring sun god. A personification or a personified woman called Holy. Holy had tried to poison the babe Krishna. So we looked at all the dictionaries and you may need more convincing. So let's go back to the Father's Word and we'll look at the Strong's uh, Concordance. And we're going to go to the Greek. 1506. Okay. 1506. I've got a link for it. So we're looking at the Greek and we're looking at 1506, the entry uh, 1506. Right here. Lexicon Strong Greek 1506. Now, if we look at this word in the Greek, what we're going to find out right away that's going to stand out, it's, what does it say? It's from Hyle. Hyle. What does Hyle mean? The sun's ray. The sun's ray. Pure, sincere, unsullied. Found pure when unfolded and examined by the sun's light the sun's ray judged by sunlight basically Heil is where we get the word halo from we get the word halo from the German and Dutch language Holy, as we say in English. Now, 
you've all seen these pictures of Jesus and Mary with halos, right? Here's Jesus with the halo. Jesus with the halo. Jesus with the halo. Mary with the halo behind. The sun halo. And it doesn't take long to look up these words, nimbus, halo, or aureole, and see that their meaning is indicative of sun's rays. I just showed it to you in the original Greek. Solar power, or even the sun's disk over the statue. The sun's disk, sun. But few would correlate to sun worship as Christians. After all, we all went to worship on sun day of the week. So why make the jump to sun worship? Who are we truly worshiping saying holy? Why do we think it so far stretched with all this evidence that Satan all along from the beginning said he would be worshiped like the most high? And truly had the Father, Yahweh, had not the Father, Yahweh, opened our eyes, we would continue to be like those in Acts 7.42, who, quote, Elohim turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. Havarim, brothers and sisters, this is worship of the sun and all the stars and anything created, not the creator himself. This is what's behind that belief of Christianity. If you're still not convinced, consider these additional facts about this group of words. A halo from Greek, also known as a nimbus, oriel, or glory or gloriole is a crown of light rays circle or disc light that surrounds a person in art it has been used in the iconography of many religions to indicate holy or sacred figures and it has at various periods also been used in images of rulers or heroes in the religious art of ancient Greece, ancient Rome, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam, among other religions, sacred persons may be depicted with a halo in the form of a circular glow, or flames in Asian art, around the head or around the whole body. This last one is often called a mandorla. There's nothing new under the sun. Okay. The Christians didn't invent this. The, the Islam don't just practice this out of uh, 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 mishap. Neither his Hinduism or Buddhism. Nor did the Greeks invent this. Sun worship existed from the beginning. It's worship of the shining one. Hashatan himself. He has us all tricked into worshiping him. The sun god Helios, called Christ by the Romans in ancient Greek religion and myth, is the god and personification of the sun, often depicted in art with a radiant crown and driving a horse-drawn chariot through the sky. This is the sun god Helios. Here's the halo. All, all the sun's rays. Though Helios was a relatively minor deity in classical Greece, his worship grew more prominent in late antiquity thanks to his identification with several major solar divinities of the Roman period. In, this, in the pictures next to Helios is Colossus of Rhodes, a statue of the sun god Helios. See the halo? Note his unusual radiant crown, radiant crown, 
copied for the Statue of Liberty. Here's our Statue of Liberty in the U.S. Same halo. But the thing that should have been our first clue in Scripture was that the Hellenistic rulers were often shown wearing radiant crowns or halos that seem clearly to imitate this effect. Here they are. Here's an early painting showing the halos of Moses along with ancient Egyptian paintings to show you that sun worship is not new. It is worship of Satan as he intended when he rebelled. This is a sun disk on this Egyptian painting. That's the sun god, Amen-Ra. This is halos on Moses and his followers. You would be shocked to know that because of its pagan origin, the halo form was avoided in early Christian art. So instead, a simple circular nimbus was adopted by Christian emperors for their official portraits. <laughs> They're trying to hide something from you. Did you catch what I just shared? The Hellenists of the letters of Paul, Shaul, worship these symbols. Truly may Yeshua's blood cover us all for our ignorance. The D German and Dutch equivalent of holy is helig, helig, which is derived from heil, heil. Who is heil and where have we seen heil before? Let's consult the Merriam-Webster Dictionary an actual dictionary based on the Father's Word. Heil. To salute with the German exclamation, Heil. To salute with the German exclamation, Heil, as in Hell, used by the Nazis in such phrases as Heil Hitler. They don't say Hell Hitler, they say Heil Hitler. Or however you say it in German. Heil Hitler. And Sieg Heil. Hell Victory. Heil Victory. From Middle High German. From Heil. Adjective. Healthy. From Old High German. If by now you are not at minimum disturbed by the use of this word holy or its most prominent symbols in the halo, you should prepare yourself for the next chapter, where we ask the question that if a lot of our language comes from sun worship and practices, what other words have creeped into our language and may have and may be truly separating us from Yahweh, whose expectation is we be Kodesh dedicated to Yahweh alone, and do not mix pagan worship practices. <laughs>